I'm a stockbroker. He was convicted of fraud crimes related to stock market manipulation and running a penny stock boiler room, for which he spent 22 months in prison. He recounted his life in his memoir, The Wolf of Wall Street, and the 2013 film of the same name, in which he was portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio. Early Life Belfort was born in the Bronx to accountants Leah and Max Belfort. His mother later became a lawyer. Belfort is Jewish and grew up in Bayside, Queens. He graduated from American University with a degree in biology. Belfort briefly attended the Baltimore College of Dental Surgery. However, he left after the dean of the school said, the golden age of dentistry is over. If you're here simply because you're looking to make a lot of money, you're in the wrong place career. Belfort started his career as a broker at LF. Rothschild, Stratton Oakmont fraud and conviction. In the 1990s, he founded the brokerage firm Stratton Oakmont which functioned as a boiler room marketing penny stocks, where he defrauded investors with fraudulent stock sales. During his years as a stock swindler, Belfort developed a partying lifestyle, which included a serious addiction to quaaludes. Stratton Oakmont employed over 1,000 stockbrokers and was involved in stock issues totaling more than $1 billion, including an equity raising for footwear company Steve Madden Limited. The notoriety of the firm, which was targeted by law enforcement officials in the late 1990s, inspired the 2000 film Boiler Room and the 2013 film The Wolf of Wall Street. Alabama Securities Commissioner Joseph Borg formed a multi-state task force that led to the prosecution of Stratton Oakmont after his office was inundated with complaints regarding the brokerage. Belfort was indicted in 1998 for securities fraud and money laundering. After cooperating with the FBI, he served 22 months in federal prison for a pump and dump scheme, which resulted in investor losses of approximately $200 million. Belfort was ordered to pay back $110.4 million that he swindled from stock buyers. In prison he met Tommy Chong, who encouraged Belfort to write down his stories and subsequently publish them. They remained friends after their release from prison restitution. According to federal prosecutors, Belfort has failed to live up to the restitution requirement of his 2003 sentencing agreement. The agreement requires him to pay 50% of his income towards restitution to the 1,513 clients he defrauded. Of the $11.6 million that has been recovered by Belfort's victims, $10.4 million of the total is the result of the sale of forfeited properties.